Okay, we're recording. Welcome back. Hello, world. I'm Christina. This is my lovely friend, Matt Jackson, and we're here and we're live and we're doing it. Um, I just want to thank you for doing this. I know we would probably just get drinks and like be normal humans talking, but it's not a normal human time. So. No, it's not. And I mean, we can still have drinks. That's true. Oh, I maybe could have gotten that in like the frame or in a nice cup, but I just have my water with me right now. But in the official world of this web interview series, I was wondering if you'd like to tell your story of how you got into the film business. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, I actually, I started, I guess, in high school and I took a video production class. Okay. And we kind of, no, my friends and I all signed up to the class. We looked at it as a way to hang out with each other and kind of dick around and do whatever we wanted and go make cool stuff and skateboard videos and whatever, you know, whatever our little hearts desired. And that kind of, kind of grew and we had a lot of fun and we, we kind of excelled at it. Like we, we really enjoyed it. So fast forward a couple of years, uh, I graduate high school and I was looking at moving into like political science. I don't know why. I thought that was cool. It still is, but uh, I didn't realize there was no money in it. So I went to school for like a few semesters doing political science. And I would always argue with the teachers and it just, it wasn't right fit. I I didn't really enjoy college. So I dropped out and the girl that I was dating at the time was like, you know, you should really consider doing something you really want to do. And at the time I was playing music and going to concerts all the time and I was like you know what I kind of want to go to school for for like audio production like I want to get into recording bands and so I went I I toured a couple schools um a couple audio schools one in New York uh one in Tennessee a couple in Atlanta and I ended up settling on the Art Institute of Atlanta okay because it was close to home and I could, you know, stay at my parents' house, not have to worry about anything, not have to take any loans out. I wasn't interested in taking loans out. And all my friends were here. So I started at Art, Art Institute of Atlanta. And the first class that I had to take was a video production class. So I took the class, did really well, really enjoyed it, kind of kind of got back my my enjoyment and love for filmmaking and that's kind of where where it began so then i got an internship at a local production company called digital soul which is here in atlanta and those guys all worked on like commercials and music videos and this is like the early 2000s so at the time there's a lot of rap coming out of atlanta a lot of hip-hop little john East Side Boys, Usher, all those people. So I was fortunate enough to be able to like, intern and then eventually work as a production assistant on some of these music videos. And eventually, you know, I was working on jobs and like the camera department would need some help. And like, hey, come over here, kid. We need you. We need you to hold the slate, or we need you to do this, or we need you to do that. I mean, we were shooting film at the time. Yeah. So, um, you know. That's that's kind of how I got sucked into that. Um, and at the time, I also purchased the camera and was going out and shooting my own stuff. And and so, uh, yeah, I ended up asking two local 600 members for advice on how to move my career forward. And they said, well, you know, you need to join the union. And they both wrote letters of recommendations for me to join and they sent those letters off and then I got a phone call and and our director at the time said, you know, are you interested in joining? I said, yes. And, uh, and that was that I filled out the application and I joined and here we are almost 15 years later. Whoa, 15 years. Good for you. Look at that. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, I think I've been in the union 
Not, not, not that long. I think I got in in like 08. Okay. I think. But I was, you know, like I said, working as a production assistant before that. Gotcha. So. That's awesome. I yeah. mean, we're along the, along the way, uh, would you say there are certain maybe mentors you've had or certain jobs that really like, uh, I don't know, really pushed you? Yeah, definitely. I've had a lot of, a lot of different mentors. I mean, obviously the, you know, the guys at, at product or at uh, digital soul that gave me my first opportunity, like those guys, those guys helped me out. I mean, they, they really helped steer me kind of the direction that uh, I would eventually go. Um, there's a local assistant named Ross Sebeck that he gave me some of my first opportunities as he was moving up, uh, trying to be a director of photography. Uh, he helped train me as an assistant, as a camera assistant and always encouraging him and his wife, both Agnes, just totally whatever I needed. They were always there to help. Um, you know, and then along the way, you know, I had a guy named Larry Gianeschi, who I continue work with and we've been off and on for, I don't know, 10 years now, um, locally. And then, uh, Paul Verrier, um, I've got a lot of help from Lex Rollins over the years. Um, Greg Lund is a huge, huge influence of me in my career. I did a lot of work with Greg before he retired. Um, in fact, <laughs> I got his front box when he retired, which is kind of cool. You know, he's, he's like a, he's like a father figure to me. And, uh, and I have a few of those, um, a few, fa few father figures. Um, not so many mom figures cause there's <laughs> just not that many like mom figures, you know, in higher positions, uh, unfortunately, yeah. but, um, you know, definitely some father figures. I mean, you've worked with so, a couple, been, some legends and dairy women, right? I mean, I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, of I like uh, off the top of my head, like I did, uh, I did hidden figures, and in uh, our director of photography, uh, you know, was a woman. So she's awesome, 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 awesome Australian. So yeah. Have you worked with her since, or is that just a kind of a very specific? She's been all over the world. Um, she, where's, I'm like trying to think. Oh my God, my mind went blank. I forget her name. You're going to have to edit this. <laughs> Let me go look. Hold on. Oh what God. if I could look to? That's so funny. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at slates. Uh, Mandy. Oh yeah, Mandy. Why did I forget that? Oh, you know what? That's yeah, cool. So... I, I was I watched a really awesome. Um, I don't know if it was a podcast or a, you know one of these like Zoom talks that had Mandy and Ellen Curis, uh, and uh -huh. a couple other people, and it was just like, so cool. <laughs> I mean, have you worked with her since, or is that just you worked with her on that one job? No, no. So that was. There's like white. Issues. So that was like the last time I've, I've worked with Mandy. So Mandy Walker was the director of photography on Hidden Figures. Um, she's been out of the country. I mean, she's, she lives in Australia and she also has a place in, in Los Angeles. So she's constantly bouncing around. Yeah. Um, and she was in China doing Milan and, you know, she's just been, she's been all over. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, as far as women directors of photography, she, I think she's about, she's the only, yeah, she's the only one that I've worked with. Really? In all your years? That's like, I yeah. mean, maybe like little projects? Well, or? no, I take that back. There was, you know, there was uh, actually one of my first movies. Uh, I forget her name. Uh, something Selena Bola. I don't know. She was a local 600 director of photography and pa she passed away a few years ago. She had oh. cancer. Um, I forget her name. Sierra, Sierra Felina Bola was her name. Sweetheart. Oh my God. She was yeah. great. But um, yeah, she got cancer and oh, passed. I hear that. So I, yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's the only two DPs, women DPs that I've ever really worked for. Oh, that's so curious. I mean, I, I've only been doing this less than five years and I've maybe worked with one. So I guess that's not really that surprising either. But I mean, they're out there. Yeah. They're out there world. <laughs> Just, yes, uh, they are. I mean, but you're, you're, you know, you're in a different market too. I mean, I would think, uh, I would think there would probably be more, you know, uh, women and people of color in New York than Atlanta. Yeah. I mean, I, I Maybe, feel like there's just always, I, to an extent, I mean, I'm no expert on it, but I feel like there's, there's a big barrier between a uh, low budget and big budget when it comes to diversity and hiring. Um, mm -hmm. that's like a whole other <laughs> conversation, but I'm actually curious because in your role as a second AC on set, um, you're coordinating so much with people, but would you say there are certain experiences you've had with particular DPs where you've just learned so much from them as a DP or learned so much of, I don't know, certain aspects of what makes them really good at their job or what you don't like about having to kind of baby them maybe? Mm, I mean, they're all different. Every yeah. director of photography is different. Um, I would say most recently in the last the last few years, like I, I got to work with Rodrigo Prieto and to watch him work, it was like watching, you know, Leonardo paint. I mean, he was a painter, right? Leonardo, yeah. wasn't he a painter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, Anyway, so, you know, just watching him work. I mean, he literally yeah. would paint with light and just the way that he would, he would interact with people, um, yeah. the way that he would talk to his, you know, department heads and his crew. And, you know, we set him up with HMEs and he would just kind of walk around and, you know, tell, tell his gaffer, Sean Sheridan, like, this is what I want to do. Like, you know, he would tell his key grip, all right, you know put a cider over there and he'd just walk around and, and just, you know, quietly talk. I mean, he was never yelling. There was never screaming. Uh, it's just calm and cool and collected. And that's Rodrigo. I mean, oh my God, what a dream. Just an yeah. absolute, absolute dream to work with. Yeah. It's always really special when you have those moments and you're like, you're really watching something happening and like, how can I help or not be in the way? Yeah. Are there any yeah, other I mean, cinematographers just, that you can think of? I mean, you've worked with a lot, I mean, they, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I, really stand out. I would say all. I would say all. I mean, they all stand out. They all stand yeah. out in their own, their own ways. Like I, I did a lot of work with Igor Meglak uh, over the last four years, three years, three or four years, and you know that's all second unit work where it's big, it's lots of cameras, lots of explosions, lots of cars lots of action and you know you got to be on your a game with those guys and that crew and you know they they expect um you know they expect you to know what you're doing and if they smell weakness then you know you might not get asked back on the next job and that's fine and that's great and you know they they just want people that are really good at what they do and they care and that to me is important um uh, you know but he's a completely different style than rodrigo totally different style yeah so you know and mandy has a totally different style than than all of them so you know everybody's you know, everybody's got their own like film personality in the way that they run a set. That's a good point. Yeah. Oh gosh, can you hear all the New York City sirens going off right now? <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, it's New York. That's New York pretty normal. <laughs> yeah. Um, are there certain people that when you just like watch movies or TV shows in your free time, you look and you're like, oh man, it would be so cool to work with them. Like I hope that happens someday. Uh. For me personally, no, because usually when I'm watching something, I'm picking it apart mm. and, you know, I'm like wondering, like, where did the camera system sit during this take? <laughs> like, are they under the camera right now? Like, where were they at? Like, and why is that shot out of focus? <laughs> and, you know, just like weird, weird things like that. Like, I, it takes a lot to get me really invested in a story. Yeah. Personally. 
So I think like the last show I watched, I was like super interested in and like, yeah, she just couldn't get enough of it was like the Mandalorian. Oh, really? And even then I'm sitting there like watching that show and I'm like, how the hell did they do this? Yeah. <laughs> it is really curious. So, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe people don't know that if they're not working in film, but say in the, the pre COVID life, when you work, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week on sets, sometimes going home and watching them isn't that fun or you just are constantly kind of picking yeah. it apart. So are there, I mean, are there certain maybe movies that will just like always be dear to you in that way? Or is it just really hard to kind of connect unless it's really something special? Uh, I'd say, I'd say The Dark Knight is one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh yeah. I think that that's such, that's such a, a well-written, well shot movie the acting is phenomenal um the wrath of khan star trek 2 absolute favorite movie of all time oh really I could watch that movie a hundred i could watch that movie a hundred times and never get tired of it in fact i probably have watched it a hundred times <laughs> that's great have you seen it no okay well you you gotta watch it's a classic it's a total classic. Okay. But I mean, without any, I mean, sure, I grew up with a certain amount of Star Wars or Star Trek in my life, but without like a full context to it, would I still appreciate it? Maybe. I don't know. But it's, a, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just a really, like, like that movie, it's a submarine movie in space. It's all it is. It's like a World War II submarine movie that they redid and shot it in the 20s fourth century or 23rd century and you know added a bad guy okay i can get down with submarine movies so i might have to check it out then yeah think of it like think of it like that submarine movie in space okay so <laughs> classic um it's just funny because in my head that makes me think of that really horrible one the the league of extraordinary gentlemen i mean it's like yeah really not that great but it's also like horribly bad in a really beautiful way you know they just really went down hard <laughs> yeah and you know what i just thought about i'm such a dick i'm such a dick i did part of black panther with rachel morrison yeah <laughs> i can't like why would i for, i totally faced out wow and forgot that's kind I of a big be, like, one looking at my yeah love you rachel <laughs> Rachel if you're watching we love you <laughs> um, oh I have a good question for you in the, the again these like pre-COVID questions before we get to uh, COVID now but um, how would you personally uh, manage the craziness of working with your personal life like if you're working 60 hours a week what are things that you would do just to like keep you sane or keep you I hate to say the word creative, but some people. Um, well, I've been on the road, like before COVID hit, I had been on the road for about a year. No, I'm sorry, two, two to two and a half years, I think. 2018, I, was on, I started going on the road. So 28, you know, part of 2018, 19, and then, yeah. Just doing yeah. So jobs like all over the two country? Two and a half years. Just yeah, doing doing jobs outside of Atlanta. Um, I was in Savannah. I was in San Francisco. I was in Charleston. Um, so a lot of those jobs, you know, were working long hours, and I would average like when I was in Charleston, I was averaging ninety hours a week on the time card. So you got to take your weekend time out of that. So yeah. you know, we were putting we're still putting in a lot of hours. So there wasn't really any time to, there was no like creative outlets. It's just work, sleep, maybe go get some sushi on the weekends. That's about it. And now this COVID thing, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So. I mean, have there, have there been certain outlets specifically during quarantine that have been your, like keeping you sane? Like the biggest things that have been keeping just, you uh yeah i mean when it, when the, when we first went into uh the quarantine i would go out and ride my motorcycle every day yeah 
and that would kind of clear my head get me away from you know whatever it is I'm feeling that day and and just not think and just go out in the woods and hang out and ride so I need to get back on it I haven't ridden in about a month but uh really? yeah so I've actually like I said I've been well I don't know if I mentioned this but I've been working for about the last four weeks oh yeah you said so, well this is pre-recorded content but you have been working yeah. a little bit now in this new age of COVID and I don't know are there yeah. certain parts of that that you feel comfortable sharing or yeah I mean I did some non-union stuff and I did I did some union stuff so it's yeah all in Atlanta I all in Atlanta yeah so it was fine I felt pretty safe I think that some of the some of the uh, people that wrote some of our safety stuff probably have no idea, you know, what all we do on set. Um, yeah. You know, like one of the things that really stands out is like they they asked us to not hand things directly to people, and that's just not going to happen in the camera department. I'm sorry, it's just you can't. Like I'm not going to put a, you know, twenty thousand dollar lens on the ground in the middle of the woods like it's just not gonna happen yeah you know or in the rain like it's it's, it's gonna get handed directly so unless they can figure out a way to, to do that like i don't know shoot on zooms which a lot of dps aren't going to want to do yeah it is what it is so did you find in this new age now that there was a certain point where you start off with okay we're keeping our space look at how safe we are and then a certain amount of hours go by and then it's kind of like people are all in each other's business again yeah oh yeah definitely <laughs> definitely and, and you know they they have people that walk around and you know they'll yell six feet six feet six feet six feet you know that's what that's all they did they would just literally walk around and tell people can't stand close to that person it's like whoa you know what we do like i'm passing lenses off you got to do this like okay. <laughs> the project is not going to get made unless you do this like what are you gonna do you're gonna set up a table right here and i'm gonna put it on the table and then we're gonna then they're gonna come grab it if you want to do that that's fine i have no problem doing that uh you know as long as everyone is under you know understanding that this is gonna take a lot longer to do this job. Like as long as everybody's cool with that and everybody knows yeah. that, like I'm I'm fine with that. No problem. Do whatever they want me to do. Yeah, that's I mean that's clearly the that the biggest step that it seems like it's not you don't see it happening or you just hope it happens is people acknowledging that with protocols with all these concerns it's just going to take more time to do the same thing so you can't expect something different with the same actions you know oh yeah yeah i mean they, there's no doubt they're gonna have to add uh extra days to the schedule yeah they have to there's there's no way around it like the days of like you know these actors cramming as many shows as they can in a 12-month period or i think they're going to be over with yeah. At least until there's a, a a cure. And it should be. I mean, like, you know, there's no reason for actors to be greedy in regards to, like, I need to take four movies a year. Like, why don't you take three movies a year? Let's, let's give the crew a better, uh, you know, better, better living standards. You know, there's no reason for us to be shooting 15 hours a day. What a what a time to be alive. Yeah, I mean, who knew, uh, who knew that this this whole pandemic could possibly change the way that we shoot? I mean, really, if you think about it, like, you know, I think finally now they're going to start taking into consideration how important rest is and sleep into our daily lives which is great it just sucks that it took a you know 
global pandemic still had to happen. Yeah. I feel like that's something that's hard to maybe explain to someone who's not in our industry, but I imagine a lot of industries are struggling. We're clearly not the only ones struggling from this. The economy has crippled a lot of people, but uh, there's something about this almost like essential tie between filmmaking and like workaholism or like, or just exhaustion. Like as if the only way to make a movie or a TV show is to just go forever, to work all the hours, to never break. Like at least it's, I mean, just re reiterating what you're saying it, like you would hope that this would at least breed an opportunity for it to be something different, but it's just such a curious thing to, I don't know. Just unpack for some yeah of well you know what one of the things that i did over the break was um i i helped a buddy out who's a welder and he works eight hours a day and we would i would go in and i'd help him and i was help you know i was it's was great because i could i was learning a trade i was learning an honest way to make a living not that we don't do that but you know, it's just something, it's something different, something to do, something to learn. Uh, and being as though I ride motorcycles, like welding is super important. Like what happens if I break a motorcycle out in the middle of the woods or wherever? Like I, I need to know how to fix that. So I went and I, I worked with him and, uh, you know, we would start at like eight o'clock in the morning and he'd be done by four. And just getting into the swing of like doing that day in and day out was kind of cool. Like I came home and I was like, holy shit, what am I going to do with my day? There's so much time left in my day. Yeah. And then nine times out of 10, I just fall on the couch and go to sleep. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there any other, dare I say, advice or statements you'd like to make about what you think this this new chapter of our life is going to be like i mean we just got to slow everything down i think we're gonna we're gonna have to slow everything down and you know i i've always been in the mindset of less is more and you know unless you really need it like don't keep it on set and productions can wait like i've always been in the mindset of Let's keep the lenses offset. Like they don't have to necessarily be like right there with, you know, within my hand. Like they can be outside the door. If it takes an extra 10 seconds to get a lens or something, it takes an extra 10 seconds. Like that's not going to break the bank. I'm sorry. Um, you know, why do all these other departments get time to do things and the camera department doesn't? You know what I mean? Like a lot of that, uh, we, a lot of that pressure we put on ourselves, I think, but you know, we just got to slow everything down ultimately and, you know, just be safe. But having, but like getting back to what I was saying is like having a lot of things on set. I, I think that's, I think those days are kind of over for now. Um, there's no need to have everything on set. You know, we can leave stuff at the truck and go get it if we need. Um, because at the end of the day, we got to clean all that stuff. Like every day we're going to have to wipe down cases and, and all of our gear. And we're going to be doing that throughout the day too. So the more stuff we have, the more stuff we got to clean, the longer we're going to be there. You know, it's... That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I, I particularly do not want to be staying late cleaning gear, but you know, we're going to have to do some of that. So. It'll be an adjustment for sure. Oh yeah. But this whole year has been an adjustment. It's been an adjustment for everybody. Yeah. I mean, if you're not, I think if anything that's taught us, like if you're not capable of adjusting, then like do something else, you know, like you just have to, like as a human, you have to, or else you're not going to make it like you can't just be so stubborn you know, but it's just, it's a, such a huge system, like a machine that's going, that's been off the tracks now. So to like get it back on is a. Yeah. Well, there's a, there was an assistant or there is an assistant. His name is Matt Haskins. And Matt gave me some of the best advice I've ever heard in this business. And it was, you have to learn how to be a chameleon and constantly shedding your skin, 
and reinventing yourself and constantly, you know, changing. And that is one thing that we're witnessing right now is the business in the world for that matter is, is changing. And if we don't adapt with that, like we're going to be left on the wayside and, you know, the days of like being on the knob on the camera, I think for the most part, we're going to be over with until there's, well, it's definitely going to be over with until there's a cure. Yeah. You know, but that's, that's only going to further kind of, um, kill that art form I think yeah that so many of our older assistants you know know and many of our younger assistants have never seen um so we shall see you know. well I just, yeah. just wanted to thank you so much for your time I know I would rather be just like out at a bar drinking with you and the dog and all of the people in our life that we like, but we're here on the zoom. Um, but yeah. So well, it's good. It's better, it's better than nothing. And, and I'm sure, you know, once, once all the numbers start going down, we'll do it again. Sounds good. I'll talk to you later. Okay. All right. Thanks.